Hey everyone, welcome to yet another episode of Yin Squad Box. Today in this episode, I'm going to be talking about what are the recent IPOs that I jump in. Immediately the first question goes, right? What's going on with Mr. Yin? Why does he jump in IPOs? Isn't this against pretty much everything he's been telling us? Well, yes and no, right? I follow certain rules. I don't follow certain rules, right? I pick my own rules. I override them, right? It's like I have a set of algorithms and the algorithms can run itself. Obviously, I turn the button on and that's it. But I choose the time that I turn the button on, right? So this is one of those few times I say, okay, algorithm step aside, let me do the job. So without further ado, let's turn our attention to the chart. This is the chart for AI. The AI is the ticker recently went IPO for the company C3AI. Now, their founder and CEO, Tim, was actually a very interesting guy. He paid approximately $1,000 to $1,500 for each class his employee take on Coursera. Now, I think that's a great corporate philosophy, right? You want your employee to know as much as they possibly can, and you want them to keep learning as much as they possibly can. So that financial incentive, it's a great investment, right? If you have the money, and you either do charity or you invest your own employees, right? And in this case, the nice thing that he did was to invest in his own employees, which hopefully they can stay in their company, which I think a lot of them do. And over long run, his employees can keep on learning a lot of the new fancy stuff that may or may not be taught in the undergraduate program, in the master program, but they are taught by leading researchers online that they can um, they can at least get their hands on a set of codes, a set of softwares that are new out there that are freshly updated by the researchers and they just completely expand their horizon. So that's the number one thing right off the bat that I like about this corporate philosophy. I'm in this field myself as well. So I know a little bit of what they're doing, uh, both in terms of practice and also in terms of theoretical framework. And I think that it's a great philosophy of transforming research-based AI's theoretical framework in artificial intelligence into industry practice. So you get this idea of a little bit of a consulting flavor on top of you, in addition to the researcher background that the employee is having working for C3 AI. So I think that layer of combination is great. It's great in terms of you are both trained in theoretical framework, but you also have hands in actual applications. So you're aware of what's going on, what can be used. So things like this, if it can be turned into a consulting project, which is what they're doing, then I think it's great. I think it's great. So that's pretty much about the thesis. Now let's talk about the chart. For the chart, the first buy is obviously at its IPO, right? I have a thesis. I don't know anything about stock market, but I do like the company, right? So as this thing hits the clock, goes to market, I buy, right? Let's jump right in. So that's gonna be the first buy, which roughly, if you got a lucky, any time during the day, you can probably buy and you know you can probably get a hundred dollars. So let's put a horizontal line there, that's hundred dollars. And if you buy on the first day, the second day you can enjoy this jump, right? So that's gonna be like a nice little day trade that you can probably involve, but if you don't involve, you just bought on the first day, that's still great, right? You get this thing going from a hundred dollars to hundred thirty dollars, I think it's great if you can be involved with that. The next day, it's going to be a resting day, right? We need a little bit of correction from the second day jump. And the third day, we're going to pull back a little bit. And that's going to be the day you buy, right? So you can type in speaking by somewhere here around $110. Let's put a horizontal line. If not, you should definitely buy on this day, right? When the stock comes back, moving average catch up, yeah, you can probably uh, jump, in right, jump right in. Let's put a vertical line. So that's pretty much the second buy that if you're looking at the chart, Right, if things pull back, you buy, right? That's going to be the idea there. We, we break this resistance on uh, December 15th, and we get a little boost from here and so on, get a little resting day, and boom, we had a big breakout from here at $120. For me, I wasn't really watching this. I was busy with homework. With, so unfortunately, I got involved of somewhere below 120 right? That's pretty much my price line. I didn't actually get involved hundred dollars or ninety dollars uh, if i even possibly can so as you can see my price is not that great uh this is more like a luck i don't necessarily know that yesterday and today it's gonna go up and i didn't even know it's gonna go up to 160 dollars. so i would say out of all the ipos i touched this is probably one of the few lucky ones uh, that actually worked and 
uh, it, it made a return just in less than two days. So that's something interesting, right? That also changed my thesis a little bit because originally I was thinking, hey, let's buy this thing, let's wait for two years, let's see what it does, right? But now if this thing goes straight up to even $200 or $300, then maybe I have to sell a little bit. So the reason I'm making this episode is to show you guys that even for somebody like me, I don't follow the rules all the time. And I bend the rules in a way that I see fit and I don't always follow algorithms. The next stock is going to be the stock that all of you guys know. It's actually Airbnb. Let's take a look at the chart. Airbnb, it's also a recent IPO, right? So it follows a slightly different rules, but it's still going up, right? In the past few days, this is the IPO. If you jump into IPO, I will say your price is not that great. And if you follow the same thesis you did for AI, then you're probably going to break even, right? If you're saying, hey, this is IPO, I'm buying this, I'm buying that, then you're probably going to break even because this thing actually went down a little bit for one, two, three, four, for four days, right? After its IPO. So I would say that you want to be a little bit picky and you don't really want to follow the same rules for each stock. Uh, technically speaking, there are two different stocks in two different industries, in two different sectors. So it'd be a very difficult argument to build on the table to say that, okay, the same strategy follows both of them. So that's the idea here. Even though they're both IPOs, you should be using different strategies simply because they're in different sectors. So that's one thing that I want to point out. The next thing I want to point out is this stock is actually very difficult to buy. It's very difficult to just point here, right? How am I supposed to know that $125, $126, that's a good day to buy? I don't necessarily know that. And because of that, I didn't buy there, right? It's fairly simple. I didn't buy there. I waited for this day to show up and I was watching the stock from 125, 126, all the way to 130, 136. And then I was like, okay, I have to get involved. And I bought a little bit here. And then on this day, it's still going up. I bought a little bit here. So on average, my price was probably around like 140 or even 150. Take the average. I think I add a little bit on this day, right? So altogether, I don't think I actually get a very good price at least not good enough to enjoy the jump for the past four days. So overall, I think this stock could go up in the long run, but in the short run, I would say it's a lot more volatility than what my expectation is. So something like that is definitely worth discussing on the table. And this episode is going to be extremely important because it goes against pretty much all my rules. I pretty much just turn off the algorithm. I say, hey, AI, step aside, let me do the job. And so far, so good, right? So far, so good. I'm not losing money in any of these two names right now. And altogether, they take about 5%, 4% of my portfolio, which I think it's a great start. In the future, if it comes back down a little bit, I think I'll probably add. And another reason I like Airbnb is because we're having vaccines for COVID-19, right? And if you don't believe Airbnb is doing great business during the past year, even if it has been, then I will say that the next year, next two years, we're going to be expecting a boost on the online bookings of the hotels and rentals of Airbnb, which I think is a great incentive for their stock price. Think about it, right? If we have say 60% or 70% of the population vaccinated and the other 30% are like, nah, we don't want this vaccine, right? Then even though 70% of the population here in the United States, and here we have about 330 million US population, then that's still going to be a whole lot of population that's just traveling around the United States. And especially when 2021 show up, right? When you have Disney World open up, when you have when you have all these attraction sites, when you have Hawaii open up, when you have all these beautiful sites open up, people are going to travel more, okay? And I want to be jumping into Airbnb before they do. So that's the trade here. The trade here is to bet on the recovery of COVID-19. And entering to 2021, I think it's a great opportunity to catch if you have your hands in one of these hotel names. So there you go. I hope you liked today's episode. Enjoy the holiday season with your friends and family, and I'll see you in the next episode.